Last time on Base Funk. And then for my spell, I chose Banishment. I attempt to send one creature that I can see within range to another plane of existence. All I know is that thing is definitely after you. It seems like the water part needs the zombie part, and zombies are coming in. I, there's clearly like a piece of this puzzle missing. Did you say something about subjugating the dead? Is that not what you've done? You command a ghost. Corrupt the youth and convert the non-believer. I take it you're trying to absorb the energy of the storm in an effort to run its course a bit more quickly? Why did Bumber's shoot run free for so long? I could not know for certain that he was evil until I heard it from him. Mm -hmm. And then it fell on me to enact a justice of which I have doubts. I have come to a bit of an impasse about what to do with the spirits that are trapped here. To trap the spirits again the way they were, or whether it would be kinder to simply destroy them. Really don't think that destroying the souls is an appropriate course of action. I commissioned you and your friends to capture the necromancer, and in a way you have. <laughs> has anyone ever been released when they are in your custody, sir? No one has ever been released from my care. By leveling up to level 8, Valtari gained another level 4 spell slot and learned fear. 26, another natural one! <laughs> That's impot- Someone screenshot this. Do you fancy uh, dinner sometime? Uh, your place or mine? I'm curious how you kill an angel. So I wouldn't worry your pretty little head about it unless you have something or like the sword of Groomsh or something. I think you're going to have to keep it purely hypothetical for now. The new spells that Zoe has uh, is uh, level 3. She took uh, Dispel Magic, and she has a level 5 spell slot now, and she took for that Telekinesis. There is a long vertical line in the air. Okay, I want to approach the spatial distortion. It looks like you're in space. I would say I have something of a Claire problem at the moment. Oh? She is not as reliable as I was hoping. She has insecurities, which are inconvenient. I want to know everything about when you and the rest of the Lilies first came to Ilium. And the second thing is I want your help in stopping Warden Light. We came here because this is perhaps the greatest concentration of magical power in all of existence. If you can tell me what made the barrier and how to get rid of it, I'll give you anything. Put an end to my Claire problem. Kill your sister. Yeah, we have a deal. What's the bad news? Someone's been murdered. What's the very bad news? Theodora killed somebody. What's the good news? I have a mission from Warden Light. Who's Theodora killed? I don't know. I only saw it in the memories of the thing in the ice. Who was the person who was murdered that's not the person Theodora murdered? Her name, and he like pulls up his dossier, and he says, is Lyra. Can I have wild magic roll in with, hey, what's one? One's not a big deal, is it? Did you really roll a one? I rolled a one. What happens is you are eventually consumed by the fire. Where Zoe was is just fire. And then as it begins to die down, where Zoe was is something else. A Zoe-sized red dragon. <laughs> You brought this upon yourself, okay? You're the one who decided to include... Turn not into a dragon board. No, no, no. Just turn into a dragon on your wild magic table there. Listen, it has to be significant. There's no point to doing the wild magic thing. That's the whole fun. You're only going to get that here, baby. Also, I'm curious if you're ever going to introduce that the one of the great options on the original magic wild magic table, the turn into a potted plant. <laughs>
<laughs> I mean, that's just a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference, and it's very good. I mean, it is good, but still, it's it's in there. Well, wild magic is boring if it's predictable, and if nothing else, turning into a dragon wasn't predictable. None of y'all saw that coming. I, I'm just making a comment about, you did this to yourself, Austin. And it was awesome. Um, <laughs> uh, so before we start, I just want to say this is, as of this recording, it's like E3 right now. Uh, so if you're listening, I assume the show will live on many generations after my death and it'll be very popular and they'll make it into several movies and they'll keep rebooting it and eventually get bad. But before that happens, uh, if anybody in that time is listening to this and is curious, when we're recording, Bioware just announced their new game, Anthem. Yep. And if you watch the trailer for that in the dialogue, someone says something to the effect of, it's very dangerous to leave Tarsus. <gasps> yep. <laughs> da, da, da. Austin is the arbiter of all entertainment media because <laughs> every idea he has for a dice funk ends up being used somewhere else and he doesn't get paid for it. So <laughs> this is more incentive than any for him to just buy. And I remember the, the, the game franchise you have on your Patreon. Which one is it? Oh, Bloody Roar. The Bloody Roar franchise. You might as well because you're already writing the plot to the next Bloody Roar game through your life that's all i'm saying at this point i just think there are pr people listening to dice funk who are just listening out for cool terms you invent and they're like that's a good one we'll have that one please and they're not bothering to pay up at least not even a dollar to the patreon that is just disrespectful (laughs) let me tell you would you would you feel less bad if bioware had done someone at bioware had donated a dollar to dice funk before stealing the word tarsus (laughs) Maybe bef- if before Mass Effect Andromeda, I might have been cool with it. Now they're on they're on the naughty list. <laughs> they gave us Legion and Thane. They got a little leeway from that. All right, give them a little bit of room. I have a difficult relationship with Bioware, as all as we all do. Also, Konami, if you're listening to this, you know you know how to get in touch with me. Come on, Bloody Roar, you're not using it. Uh, also, I got a question for you. Um, let me see what picture you're using for uh for Zoe here for the character sheets. Oh my God. Ah! I, I mean, isn't that super fitting now? The picture you use for Zoe is fucking Noe. Uh, no way. I don't know how to say her fucking name. It's no way. But yeah, that's the joke. Because she turns into a dragon. Oh my god. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you so much. Uh, I'm very good. Remember that time I changed the theme song of the second season to foreshadow a joke 20 episodes later? <laughs> Yeah, yep. I mean, here's. The, I mean, I, I guess my standpoint was I kind of saw the dragon thing, the the hint there for a while, and then I was just like, "Well, there's the payoff." You're welcome. When I put that on the wild magic list, it was with full knowledge that it would be a huge disaster if it went off at the wrong time. Like if if she had done it in episode two for like some mundane thing, like I'm just gonna make some coffee, I'll heat it with a magic spell. Oh no, I'm a dra-. like that would have been so anticlimactic, but I think it worked well because a it's been a while, so it, we're, sh- we're shaking up the, sh- the status quo. And B, it was, like, at the end of, like, a very emotional day for her. She had just done, like, this deal with the devil to kill her sister. And it was just like, wow, she's reached an emotional impasse. And right she has to make some tough decisions. Oh, God, she's a dragon! <laughs> and it happened over a bad pun, essentially, and her punish- like, hitting someone for it. This is the second time in a row where you're using magic against Roland <laughs> has caused a severely probably positive outcome maybe i mean rule of threes right for for the writing to be satisfying we need it to happen one more time and for it to be a disaster (laughs) yep that's how it works you have to have a volta the next roll it's gonna be you're gonna be like oh uh i don't know this day is just dragging on or something like that and i hit you again (laughs) with a spell and then that one's like oh well you just spontaneously combust it's like oh well that's the fair that's the fair trade-off to this trilogy i suppose your butt falls off. <laughs> or or just instantly kills Roland in the most uh, most anticlimactic matter, and then I'm like, well, that happened. Worth it, though. Speaking of things happening, uh, at the end of the last episode, you were given your new mission, and I kind of imagined this episode starting with you guys, like, casing the crime scene. But first, I think we have to address the actual <laughs> scene that developed there, which is at the, the debriefing meeting... One of you burst into flames and is now a dragon. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zoe slash Chris, do you want to tell us about your new dragon stuff? I mean, do we really have to respond to it? It sounds like a pretty mundane thing that happens. So I feel like, you know, <laughs> what what kind of preserves were on the toast is what I'm really curious about. 
Uh, Boysenberry. Boysenberry? He's trying to kill us! Oh, that's some classic humor right there. Also, I'm looking at your character sheet, Chris, and it does not accurately represent your racial features here. I'm sorry. I didn't update it again, uh, unless required. I updated actually on my physical character sheet, where my race is now half elf slash in com like in parentheses red dragon <laughs> question mark. Mm-hmm. Because she is a red dragon, and with that came a plus one bonus to AC, the ability to fly, and the ability to breathe fire on people because. That's what dragons do. Once per short rest, I believe, like Dragonborn have that ability. Mm-hmm. This sounds like a unanimously good thing. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how everyone else in town reacts to it. But right now the question is, how do y'all react to it? Because you thought you were watching Zoe die after you found out that Theodora killed somebody and also someone else you know is dead. There's a lot going on emotionally. So why don't you guys work through this scene? Let's explore the space a little bit. Veltari's not been here ultimately too long, and so far her entire time in town has been get a manticore, watch a goo person explode, flirt with a bartender, and now this person I live with is a dragon. That's pretty cool. I'm I'm just enjoying the spectacle of this moment. It's like, oh, we got a dragon on the team now. Sh- sh- sure, I hadn't I didn't really have time to get emotionally invested. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a leather tail now. I like leathery tails. Roland's going to basically just start off by saying, well, at least we don't need to worry about getting you a bed for your room. God, oh, nuts. Why Why doesn't the dragon get a bed? We're not going to get one that's large enough to drag it up the stairs to fit in there. We can figure out some other way for you to sleep. You can get a mattress or something. Don't, don't, don't be being a racist here and not give the dragon a I'm bed. I'm not being a racist. <laughs> I'm just saying that we can get a mattress and make a nice mattress set up there. We just... Are going to bring in a bed frame is all. While they're arguing about mattresses, I'm petting the dragon. Okay, you're petting Zoe. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. Do you know it? Or is, Theod- is Theodora just like, ooh, new animal? Or do you- are you fully aware that it's your friend? I don't think she cares. She's just really excited there's a dragon. So wait, it, if, if this is the logic, was Theodora then here for when... Because wasn't this like right after Winifred was like, I have bad news, everybody. <laughs> Theodora's killed people. And she just will be like, yeah, I've done that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Theodora is not phased by things that phase normal people. And we'll talk about that. I just want to break in, in here for a sec to say uh, you guys got furniture delivered because there was a time skip between the level up scenes and the current scene. Right. So uh, Zoe has a bed now and she has like new furniture that was delivered for capturing Maximilian Hawthorne. Uh, but she is still the same volume. Okay. So, yeah. Her, her mass hasn't really changed. She is a zoe sized dragon which is actually really small like she you guys could actually you could carry her around (laughs) i i I have a question for you zoe uh you're a dragon now do you still have posable thumbs i don't know because because i'm i'm asking this for a very specific reason (laughs) zoe i had a lot of fun playing playing music with you the other day and i want to know if that proficiency in drums you've got is uh i i I kind of want to play play in a band with a dragon drama. Do you, is this going to be feasible? <laughs> so I want Zoe to try to because I assume I'm quadrupedal right now. Like yeah, so dragons in D and D have two legs, two arms, and two wings. So you have like six thingamajiggies as opposed to like wyverns, which only have four. And dragons in D and D are also like very intelligent. They can do like live forever <laughs> and they're like real they're like the best the game is named after them right yeah so i don't actually think you're gonna lose anything unless you want to because you think it works better for your character okay uh i just i'm, I'm trying to think of the notion of like have there been dragons in dd that have ever like st- like stood up before is that a thing they can do um i don't imagine it'd be comfortable but you could probably do it for a limited time like dogs can do that they can stand up on two legs for a bit all right, then yeah, I, I wanna I wanna do that. Then grab them sticks and try to drum. <laughs> okay, why don't you give me a performance roll and we'll see how much of that you retain. A fourteen, not great. I, I rolled pretty low, even with my big bonus. I mean, fourteen is not low. It's just not Neil Pert. <laughs> like, mm. <laughs> like you're you're doing some stuff up there. You know, you're still keeping a solid four four rhythm going. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're be- better than Ringo Starr at least. <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, we'll say yeah you're you're like a pete best level is that fine with you can you live with that i can live with that for now she's gonna have to get better because she 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 was at phil collins level before and now she needs to get back up to that point 
so, some some people can recover having only one arm as a drummer. I think you can recover having wings as a drummer. So I, I think it all should work out fine for you. Maybe what her issue was was not taking advantage of her tail enough, because that's essentially like a third drumming arm at this point. Zoe, what you've lost in technical performance, you have definitely made up in being a dragon drummer. We're gonna we're gonna keep playing together. I I think I think this is gonna work out quite nicely. I'm gonna shoot fire out in a really cool motion as I bang the drums. <gasps> <laughs> yes, yes. Mm. So you're feeling all right, otherwise, Zoe? Nothing off after your transformation there? I mean, I don't know. I I guess if there's a downside to this, I'll find it out eventually. Just making sure you don't have anything wrong with you after the transformation. This is oh, I mean, there's a lot wrong, but you know psychological and that we just push down <laughs> Zoe's a very good character all right so at this point Winifred is like ah! <laughs> ah why why is this always happening can we just have one normal day can we just please you, you okay Winnie no not okay what's wrong there's a baby dragon look not a baby dragon <laughs> just a small dragon you're tiny! I'm a small dragon! There's a difference! I just want one day where nobody dies or catches on fire or is secretly a murderer. Can we have that, please? Who is secretly a murderer? We should probably deal with this. You! Dora! I never... Who'd you kill? Uh, I used to kill a lot of people. It wasn't on purpose, but apparently people are um a lot better at drowning than I thought. So, you know... <laughs> They drowned. I didn't because I like swamps. Uh, and, you know, shit happens. <laughs> the parrot and, like, peers out from behind you, throws up, like, a gang sign, like, shit happens, bitch, and then floats back in. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. People, people, people drown and that being your whole excuse, that's, that's fine. That's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go with that. You did, you didn't intentionally kill them. That's, that's fine. Let's, let's keep being cool band of cool people. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you understand. Sometimes you bring people back to your swamp to hang out and do fun activities, and then they drown, and you know, it's a bummer because then you can't do activities. Roland's going to do a little deduction from all this. <laughs> Get that 20 intelligence stat cranking. Yeah, let's uh, just do it. Is it intelligence or investigation that we want to pull here? Ah, uh, this seems like it's just an intelligence, because it's just all happening in your brain zone. Not great, just a 12. All right. I mean, when he mentioned that he got this information from the thing in the ice. Right. And you know that it, the thing in the ice, a.k.a. the stalker, has been relentlessly pursuing Theodora. Yeah. So I do not think there is much dots to connect there. Right. Like, Roland is going to say, well, at least we know why you're being uh, accosted by the zombies now, Z uh, Dora. Yeah, I guess that would make sense. Just how many did you end up killing accidentally over these years? I don't know. I'm bad. I'm bad at math. Jeez, this is just gonna be another problem for this town. I've been alive for a really long time, so I mean, uh. to be clear, you guys know that the 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 stalker is almost certainly someone Dora killed. You're not on. You're not really sure what the what's up with the zombies at this point. They seem to be coming from outside. And they seem to be basically just like vehicles that the stalker is driving to Dora. Yeah. Like they are all very nicely dressed. They don't have any like wounds or anything. They're not drowned as far as you can tell. Okay. You, are you a little less stressed now, Winnie? Uh, you know, D D Dora didn't mean to kill anyone. Just people are good at drowning. Is that, you, that's all fine. Right, Winnie? Yeah. Is it okay with you, Roland? I don't, I don't know. I Not really, but right now we can't do much about it. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm going to deal with this at a different time since we have a more pressing matter with an active murder case on our hands. Also, we have a baby dragon to pet. It's not a baby dragon. It's not a baby anything! But you're so little! I'm still technically taller than you. 
out of character, every time you mention the phrase baby dragon, I'm not picturing a dragon that's an infant. I'm picturing the Yu-Gi-Oh card baby dragon <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, that's how I'm now picturing Zoe. It's just this little orange, like, cute, chubby-faced little tiny dragon. And if we find a time magician of some kind, I could fuse with him and become the thousand-year dragon. Exactly. <laughs> and you'll you'll defeat uh, Bakura in no time. Duel. I think you know this, Chris. It's Thousand Dragon, right? I didn't want to correct, but it's Thousand Dragon. Yeah, I think it is just Thousand Dragon. Look, Yu-Gi-Oh had a lot of strange names for creatures, all right? Yeah. Very poorly translated, Konami. And we're back to this again. We're back to this again. Um, <laughs> Roland, though, turns to, to Winnie and assures him, Winnie, I will make an effort to talk about this at a later time when we're done with this case. Okay. Okay, if you think that's best. Um, Ishmael has secured the scene, if you guys want to go there. And he hands you the dossier for the murder case. I, I fear he's going to start handing us dossiers and jars of preserves to have for the road. Tiny ones. You never know when you're going to get peckish. But shouldn't we also have something to put the preserves on? We can't just spoon jelly into our mouths. Why not? That's that's honestly how I end up having it anyway. <laughs> It's not soup. <laughs> when a friend looks sad, because he just thinks it's so good that you just want to eat it like soup. <laughs> I'm just going to pretend I'm going to eat it just to make him less sad. Okay, that's good. All right, I guess let's meet up with Ish- Ishmael and see what the scene is like. Uh, so you guys leave, uh, I guess, the roof of avant-garde headquarters, and you head over to the giant's field, where uh, Ishmael Blood Mountain and his dog and his cat are kind of waiting for you at the edge, and they're going to lead you to the the scene of the crime. I'm flying. (laughs) (laughs) The first thing you notice is that Starbuck, the dire blink dog, has the salamander sheath in his mouth again. (laughs) Oh, puppy! He's just playing with it, and he's having a good old time. Ishmael! Hey, dudes. What's up? Your dog is going to be in so much trouble. No, man. We bought it this time. It's really warm. He likes to sleep on it. Oh, okay. Okay, good. I was worried for your pupper. What did you pay for it? I have an arrangement with the lilies. I build new houses. They give me that dank herb and stuff like this. Mm, Understandable. At least he enjoys it. He's crazy about it. Hey, Ishmael, I'm a dragon now. Yeah, I wasn't going to say anything. (laughs) <laughs> I didn't know if it was a sore subject, but cool wings, dude. Nah, it's pretty dope. You got any of that dank herb you need me to heat up? <laughs> <laughs> you want to be my lighter, dude? Yeah! I, I, can breathe, I can breathe fire without crazy stuff happening now. Blaze buddies. Hashtag 420. Wait, I want to join this party. More blaze buddies. Hey! Hey, for a bit of that Dan Cub, I can. I've got a guitar. We can have a jam session. We can have a pretty good night. We're about to go to a murder scene. <laughs> Speaking about blazing things, I believe there's a fire giant that we need to investigate. Oh man, buzzkill, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, but we're coming back to see you later. We're gonna have like the the chillest night. You all have plenty of time for your buzz later on. I like the idea. Everyone here is super into weed, except for their cop dad. <laughs> Just like, ah, oh. we'll come back later. I guess. <laughs> what a narc. Um, so he leads you across the field, and the first thing you actually see of this crime scene is probably a hand, not surrounded by anything else for a while and he just walks past it and he keeps walking and then you see a foot and then you walk some more and then you realize that Lyra has basically been scattered over quite a large area and it isn't until he gets to like the unidentifiable large torso bit that he basically stops and it's like all right I don't know where you want to start but this is basically the middle did she get exploded Appears that way, dude. When did you discover the body? Uh, last night. It wasn't me. It was somebody else. And they came and got me. Because, like, everyone likes my vibe. And then I told McWings a lot. Wait, who? Oh, the warden. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, is there a McWings a lot character in this? (laughs) Listen, 
that <laughs> listen that was that was the name he had back during when I was in college, and he doesn't like people bringing up that name after all these years. That's all. <laughs> yeah, he's Phi Sig. What's up? Anyway, <laughs> um, so do you guys want me to say, hey, no, put that down, Starbuck. Okay, sorry. Uh, do you guys want me to stay here and, like, chill with you, or do you got it? You can stay here if you want. Um, I'm just going to try to figure out what I can <clears throat> from all the pieces we got. I I I want to try something, and I have no idea if <laughs> this is going to work. Mm? That's my favorite things for you to try. Okay, I want to try casting a level three spell. Speak with dead. Hey, that could put a quick end to this. What's? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, it was him. I'm like, oh, all right, <laughs> done and done. <laughs> I'm hoping I've not messed up your plans here. Is this pushing daisies all of a sudden? Oh my god. I actually explicitly don't try to make it where my story stuff is like insulated from your abilities, because I don't I don't think that's fair. I think it's more interesting just to see what happens. So like mm. if this works, it works. So so uh, because the body's scattered in multiple pieces, do we know where the head is? <laughs> uh yeah, you can definitely find it. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna head over to the head and I'm just <laughs> gonna try and cast speak with dead on the head um it's got a 10 foot range 10 minutes of effectiveness and it should grant the semblance of life and intelligence to a corpse in range so it can answer questions it needs a mouth and to not be undead uh if it's been targeted by this spell in the last 10 days it won't work and i can ask it up to five questions they should know what they knew in life including languages they knew in life and the downside is the answers will likely suck. <laughs> mm-hmm. The per- the creature doesn't need to be honest. It may not be useful information. They may just kind of be a bit out of it. But that's the deal, I, th- I believe, with Speak With Dead. So so you find Lyra's head, which has been exploded off of her body. <laughs> yeah. It is intact enough that this sh- this will work. So you can absolutely use a spell slot, cast Speak with Dead, and ask her five questions about her murder. Okay, so I uh, I light my incense and I get out the guitar and I just sort of gently start twiddling away uh, while the incense is burning. And I look, hopefully and expectedly, hoping that this head comes back to life. <laughs> I'm, no, so what's the tone of this song this is mostly just for me like is it full on jam session or is it like respectful <laughs> is it like this is like respectful but a little bit a uh, little bit emo it's sort of just like you know it's 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 somber it's quiet but it's got a bit of it's got a bit of an edge to it <laughs> okay when you said emo i was like okay so we're going like cure joy division and then you're like ding 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 i was like i don't know what the fuck that is <laughs> i don't know i was gonna go with something more emo and then it's like it's one in the morning and apparently that's what my head thought emo sounded like so whatever that sound was that's what i'm playing i guess all right lyra the fire giant's eyes pop open she looks at you and says you ah hey i'm sorry i took control of you and mesmerized you a bit you may have noticed you're dead have you heard the news that she's dead we want to find out who killed you i know you don't want to talk to me but we want to know who killed you how did you die why should I tell you? You probably helped him. Team, little help. <laughs> uh, we're trying to solve your murder. That's why you should tell us, you dingus. <laughs> okay. Uh, intimidation or persuasion to use dingus as as a term of endearment in this interrogation. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say persuasion or deception? I don't care. I have six to persuasion. Twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess I am being kind of a dingus. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I know you don't want to talk to me, but um, I brought your head back to life. I, I only get like five chances to ask you something and I we'd like to avenge your death. So do you know who killed you? All right. So that's your second question. And she's going to cooperate because that's a 25 from Theodora. Uh, to your second question, she says, yeah, I saw him. It was the guy in the hat. He had a mask. 
Do any of the party know who is being talked about here? I'm being very careful not to ask more questions yet. (laughs) I think I might know. It's that dude who's not here anymore for some reason. The the guy from the party. Right. That person. Oh, jeez. How did this person kill you? They snuck up on me, and I felt very cold, and I turned my head, but I couldn't move my body, and then everything went black. Hmm. It's really weird that a wizard is murdering instead of getting murdered. That's unusual. (laughs) You're lucky that's not a question. I very much am waiting for someone to accidentally use one of their genie wishes on this. (laughs) Is this really the headquarters of the Quickie Mart? (laughs) Really? (laughs) I'm trying to think of this like genie wishes because I have a plan for how to use the final one. Um, I'm thinking very much along Disney Aladdin lines in terms of like make the last wish about the person that grants the wishes. Mm. Um, so we've got what we've used three. Yeah. Do you have any idea why they would kill you? No, I've never seen this person before. Okay. Um, look, our time is running out. I've got one more question for you. Is there anything that we can do for you that you didn't get a chance to do before you passed? Is there anything you'd like done? Because I appreciate it's uh, not ideal being dead, and most people who are dead don't get the chance to make final requests. So, uh, you got any final requests? Yeah, you can collect my debts. Penny owes me, and Wolf owes me. Penny and Wolf. Uh, oh, I was going to ask what, what, what they owe you, but... Uh... Guess, guess I left that a little late, didn't I? Um, also, there's just no money here, so it's kind of abstract. <laughs> yep. All right. Okay. Th- thank you, and I hope that you are able to find some peace in an afterlife that doesn't grant much. Uh, at least, at least where we are. And I, I, I stop playing the music. A small smile of contentment crosses Lyra's face, and the light goes out in her eyes, and she is no longer animated. But you guys got a lot of information. This is going way faster than I thought. I have an idea as to what might have happened. We have to do an investigation roll to check some things about the wounds and the scene. 21? Could I make a guess as to what happened? (laughs) Sure, if you want to do a called shot. (laughs) I think that she was frozen and then broken to pieces and then scattered, which is why there isn't much of a blood trail around, it seems. Uh, With a 21, I can confirm that is true. Okay. Yep. It seems like this person, whose motives are mysterious, and who I think we will be calling Garrick the Great for the foreseeable future, uh, snuck up on Lyra, froze her, almost solid, only leaving enough for her head to turn and see her attacker, and then she was exploded to the four winds. It seems like you you all have had a run in with with our uh, with our killer before. Is there anything that you know about this killer that you can fill me in on? Because I I feel like I'm a page behind uh, just just a little bit. Well, I'll, I'll tell you something that might encourage you to act faster. Um, uh, Bumbershoot really did not like him. Oh yeah, he's a pretentious prick. Yes, and uh, he is a self proclaimed a uh, wizard or magic user of some power that no one in town knew about when we asked around and even Winifred has no records of this person so Hmm. it could be possible that this Garrick the Grand figure is an alias that someone runs under when they uh, decide to go around and perform acts like this but then again this is the first time that I've heard of this person in geez it's probably been a few weeks being able to stay in a town this small, undetected, suggests this person is powerful. Mm-hmm. That is a motive to go find them. Where do we start? As you say that, uh, there's a voice on the wind coming in your direction, and it says, Hey, losers! And over a hill appears the rocks, as they are on the scene as well. Hi, guys! Hi, Dora. Hi! I hope you guys left some crime scene for us. You guys look really nice today. Yes, we do. <laughs> I look amazing. I know, you're so cool. You are, uh, you're all looking a little bit more, uh, put together than last time I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> Claudia rolls her eyes and Robin flips you off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I deserve that. 
Good to see you still got a sense of humor, though. So, uh, what have you guys learned? Murder! <laughs> Most foul! <gasps> Damn, you cracked the case. <laughs> I reckon we're doing all right. We've, we, we, we're making pretty good progress cracking, cracking this case, if I do say so myself. Uh, we know who killed this person, how they killed them. We, we, we're on this. We got it. Dang, I guess you don't need us here. I guess we'll be going. <laughs> she says goodbye <laughs> not leaving uh who's your flappy friend oh that's zoe she turned into a dragon and she's really good for petting you should try it okay is this an eyeball thing or is this a zoe thing no this is a zoe thing i didn't do this ah uh, okay well you know what that's very cool and i'm sorry to steal your thunder on this one zoe but i also have cool news Ooh, what is it is it as cool as turning into a dragon i don't know you be the judge And then Claudia summons her spirit animal. Oh, Oh, heck, you got a cool ghost too? Yes, and the ghostly figure that appears next to her. It looks... (laughs) the Okay, I'm trying not to laugh while I say this. The creature is called a flail snail. (laughs) Yes! (laughs) Yes! It is a giant snail whose head has like what can only be described as flail appendages. And it has what the monster manual describes as a scintillating shell ah! oh. which makes it uh resistant to certain attacks um it's very big and it looks very cool very slow but also very powerful and she says can i pet it <laughs> i don't know if you should pet it it's uh very spooky and dangerous just like yours yeah and i pet mine all the time what does it do it can beat people up with its big spiky parts and it reflects magic so watch out so, I know you were turning up hoping we'd find this really cool, but, uh, look, I've I've not known either of you very long. Every time I've interacted with you, it's because you've been following in our footsteps and ended up, you know, you just follow us around. Now you're, in, you're imitating our cool spirit animals. They say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, but it's really not a good look on you, I must say. Ugh, that is a vicious burn. But if you guys didn't want other people to get this power, you probably shouldn't have just shown them off all around town. Oh no, we you can get the power. It's not that I object to you having it. I'm just going to tell you that it looks really lame when you try <laughs> this hard to be as cool as us. <laughs> Holy shit. If you're the first person to get a spirit animal, people look at you like, oh, you're a trendsetter. If you get one like a day later... You're just the person who thought they were a cool, you know, the cool trend that all the kids at school have right now. Veltari, be chill. <laughs> You're being very unchill, Veltari. I'm being, a, I'm being a bit unchill, but you, <laughs> you, you guys just really seem like you just like trying to copy what this group do. Is that not a fair assessment? <laughs> we're rivals. There has to be some symmetry to this. Come on. R- rivals would usually try and arrive places before us, wouldn't they? Wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, then you guys wouldn't do half the work. She does have a point there. Yeah, then you'd actually do something of value and be a rival. <laughs> <laughs> Although, to be fair, we did win the last bounty, so... But... You guys win a lot. I'm not certified or whatever <laughs> like you guys are. This is more of a hobby. So, Dora, do you like it or not? Do I like what? The flail snail. Oh, oh yeah, no, it's like my favorite thing in the whole world. I really want to pet it. Okay, you can pet it. <laughs> I pet that snail. Wait, what's your stand's name? It's slimy and sticky. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, that's not a stand name. No, I was, I was explaining Dora's tactile experience. <laughs> 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 Its name is, uh, its its Jojo name is Slippery When Wet, <laughs> which is Bon Jovi. I wasn't sure if it was Bon Jovi, but I checked and it is. Dora wiggles her eyebrows when she hears that. Unfortunately, Robin couldn't hold hands with the witch, so he couldn't get one. Aww. We'll get there eventually. But I mean, mine's kind of gooey, which is like a c- pretty cool sign, like soul compatibility wise. That's true. All right, so so where are you guys going next in the investigation? Mind if we tag along? I could just come back to your house. <laughs> Would that help the investigation? Help my investigation. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Dora, you really need to step up your flirting game. 
Don't tell you what to do. I'm a grown up. Roland's going to ask, do you want to do this as a full team, us and you, working together in the case and all possibly having a share in the reward? I mean, the only reward I'm interested in is a certain kind of item. I'm just going to say something, Roland, before we hear them out here. Uh, We seem to be making pretty quick progress on this (laughs) case. Are you sure we need help? Why not? Because that means splitting the reward, and we seem to be doing pretty well. We have a lot- I have a lot of stuff. I don't mind letting them come along. I don't have a lot of stuff. (laughs) I'll give you stuff. I just got a bed! You want a particular item. Do you mind sharing what that item is, or is that going to be just something you're going to keep as a secret? I mean, it's not really a secret. The only reason we're here is because we messed up on the outside, and there was nowhere else to go. And we're just trying to look for a way to get Robin a body that doesn't dissolve people. So, I mean, I know that there are artifacts like that that exist. One has to show up here eventually. I, I want to do a check of some kind. I don't know what it would be to try and ascertain. Is that likely to have any crossover with my search for a weapon to kill an angel with? So that would be arcana or religion, I think? I mean, I could do a religion check to see if I know of an item, but not for the killing the angel angle, but just sort of like, uh-huh. do I know of an artifact that would be able to restore someone to their to another body like that? I got a seven, so I'm probably not going to be much help. I got a nine, but it was a natural one on the roll there. Oops, you guys both majorly messed up on that one. Neither of you guys know, and off the top of your heads, items that fulfill any of your criteria. None, none of you are aware of any items that create new bodies or switch the souls and bodies. Veltari in particular is not aware of any, which would also qualify as cu- the kind that could take down a divine foe. Mm-hmm. So not a super successful check, but I don't like to make failure's boring so here's like a thing i will give you is that there probably are gods under which those kind of spells fall like their domains so like if there's a god of rebirth or something then that could conceivably include some kind of creating of a new body so it's not totally out of the realm of possibilities you're just not aware of those actual abilities like i'm like the same way that in real life you're like aware that like there are religions which have like uh reincarnation but like you can't name what book (laughs) those things are mentioned in if you wanted to go look them up right 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 yeah look if if these guys are following us here's what i want to say if if what we find is what you're looking for you can use it and then give it back to us when you're done does that sound fair claudia holds out a hand and i reach back and i give it a shake and yeah (laughs) all right Cool Christmas. Christmas exists now. I just decided. Uh, where are you guys heading to? Don't ask me. I have no idea where we're going. I, d- I did my section of the work this episode. The rocks turned to Roland immediately. <laughs> <laughs> where you guys go? Where are you guys going? Is it all right if I tell them? Yeah, go ahead. As long as like, if the thing we get is what they need, but it's also something we need, then they give it back to us. It's fine. T- tell them what they need to know. I love this dynamic. Dad has to check with mom first. (laughs) He's not going to spill information without checking with the person who got it first. I'm glad that you see it that way. Uh, In my head, it's just the two parents. uh, They don't want to accidentally send mixed messages to the kids, so they're making sure they're both on one page before they make a decision. Yeah, it's perfect. Uh, So uh, Roland says, you remember that weirdo that Bumbershoot was with at the party that, that they were trying to get a drink or something together at one point? The guy with the the mask. He was really pretentious. Yeah, I think I saw them talking. I didn't get it. I didn't get his name. Supposedly, that's that might be the person that did this job. Only problem is, no one in town seems to know who he is, and any search under the name he identified as uh, revealed nothing in terms of anyone. It's not really so much a matter of where to go. It's a matter of who could it possibly be. Dang, that's qu- that's quite a mystery. Certainly is, because this was someone who appeared out of nowhere, disappeared off to nowhere, and now out of nowhere decided to commit this fairly random-looking murder. Yeah, sounds super weird. So, have you noticed any particularly unusual spellcasters outside of uh, Zoe in the past several weeks? 
Hmm. I mean, most of my spellcaster time has been spent with uh, the chef, with the with the ghosts. Hmm. So she's like the only one that comes to mind. Have you checked her? Does she have a motive? She could fortune tell. She could fortune tell for us, and that would help to a certain extent. But I don't think she has the motive to pull this off. Also, her MO is more in illusions and not so much freezing and exploding people. Yeah. Isn't elemental magic your dragon's thing? Sorry, Zoe. I don't mean to narc on you, but aren't you the ele- aren't you an elemental kind of lady? Yeah, but I don't I don't have any magic that can freeze people solid though either. She has an alibi. Also rude. <laughs> Fair. I'm I mean, I'm a weird magic user, but I'm basically just telekinesis because that's the only spell I'm super good at. Mm. In the lab, it's useful for like grabbing beakers and stuff from the other side of the table. So that's the one I'm really good at. I'm a weird magic user, but I don't know any ice magic either. Right. And I'm fairly certain that whoever committed this crime will be discreet about them knowing ice magic, unless they're an idiot (laughs) and flaunt their ice magic all over the place. But I don't know of anyone in town who does so. Uh, Which reminds me, Pineapple. Hey, it's your boy Winnie. I'm still processing the fact that one of my oldest friends is a murderer. What's up? Winnie. Winnie. Yes. I promise you I will deal with that later on. All right? Okay. I'm just going to put it back in the bottle. <laughs> just just, just keep it together. Make some preserves. You'll be fine. You're doing great. Don't get it twisted. I'm definitely doing that. <laughs> anyway, we have an idea of who the murderer might be. Dang, that was fast. You guys are good at this. <laughs> We had a really strong lead we got from the uh, victim themselves, and remember that wizard name I ran by you to check on? Uh, yeah. Garrick the Goofy. <laughs> yes, that one. So far, they seem to be the most likely suspect, despite not existing in town. So the only information I have to go on is, do you have any information on any wizards or sp- magic users in town who are either elementalist or specialized in ice magic? I don't think so. Have you considered the possibility that he's a mole man and you have to dig down and get him? That solved the last one, digging a hole? I've not ruled that out as a possibility, but it just feels a bit unlikely given that he looked human and not molish. Yeah. I mean, moles are crafty, but it does seem like it's a long shot. If it turns out to be three moles standing on top of each other in a human costume, I'll be sure to let you know. God, I would be so into that, to be honest. I like their little noses. Do you guys ever think about mole noses? I do. <laughs> anyway, we'll 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 try to investigate things further from our part. Is there anything else you wanted to ask about Winnie? I mean, you guys are really the experts in the procedural stuff. Uh, I guess my only secretarial contributions would be to find witnesses. If there's anybody who saw it, and if not, then f- work backwards from motive. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's interview time. I guess. I think we'll interview the other giants, figure out what they know, if anything, figure out if they could find out if Lyra had any particular enemies that she made, other than possibly us, in recent history. Mm, yeah, that's probably not a great look. We we have our ways that we'll manage with. Okay, good luck. All right, this is Roland, over and out. Bye. So, do you just, like, say the word pineapple and you've got a direct line to Winnie? Is, how that, is that how that works? Yeah, try it. Pineapple. Hey, it's your boy Winnie. What's up? I got those scoops you crave. Uh, you you do have those scoops I crave. Your <laughs> jam preserves, they're pretty great. Just wanted to let you know. Awesome. They're pretty grape? You didn't just say that. <laughs> they're pr- pretty, pretty great. <laughs> That's a... Mm. Okay, I'll pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> See ya, Winnie. Uh... Uh, undo pineapple <laughs> bye and then next to you claudia goes pineapple and then she has a conversation you can't hear with winifred and she's like oh that will be useful pineapple is this a changeable uh code word <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think in, in the episode we introduced this mechanic it was mentioned that it it was recently changed to pineapple because of some kind of miscommunications before you mean, you mean this situation exactly occurring? <laughs> yeah, this exact Pineapple. thing. Pineapple! <laughs> Hello, it's Winifred. It's a very busy day on this line. What's up? I got... All my lines are blowing up. <laughs> it is a very busy day on this line. Uh, what did you just tell Claudia? And uh, could you not keep telling Claudia things? Uh, you know, 
I'm not a dummy. I wouldn't tell her anything mission critical. She just ordered some preserves. She said something about something being very useful. That doesn't sound like preserves. I think she meant that having access to me. Mm. Okay, that's fine. Please don't <laughs> respond to calls from Claudia until we can change the uh, the code, Winnie, pal. Can it be Rutabaga? Don't don't talk about the new code while the people we don't want to know the code are here. Oh, this this is out of character. It's like it should be Boysenberry. That should be the new new code. I was literally thinking Rutabaga before she said it. No one, I, ah! I, I don't have any proof of that, but I was one hundred percent thinking that. <laughs> okay, you're very bossy, new girl. <laughs> okay, I know I'm being bossy, but um, also they follow us around everywhere trying to steal the missions that we're doing. So uh. I like your preserves. Bye. <laughs> Unpineapple. Bye. Pineapple. <laughs> oh, it's me, Winnie. <laughs> Everyone else is doing pineapple and I got lonely and felt left out. How are your wings, Zoe? Uh, they're all right. How's every little thing with you? Pretty good. Wiggling my little tentacles. That's what I do. <laughs> you know what you should do? You should get little socks for your little tentacles. Oh, <laughs> keep them warm. You're welcome. Goodbye, pineapple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have spent 20 minutes standing in the crime scene, <laughs> surrounded by body I mean, parts. Pineapple. <laughs> well, that's fine because that's the time we saved by the previous thing. So we've now got time to shout pineapple a bunch. <laughs> At the very least, maybe we can f- narrow down who the uh, suspect is by figuring out if Lyra had any particular adversaries, foes, people that wanted her dead. I'll talk to Ishmael! Alright, so I think the best way to handle this is there's a short montage to avoid having to force you guys to memorize like a bunch of new names. Um, mm. <laughs> most of them aren't, aren't super helpful. The most important thing you get from these interviews is that it seems like Lyra had a lot of enemies. In fact, she kind of seemed like a huge douchebag. Um, you guys might remember when you met her, she just stormed up to you and tried to snatch Zoe up and then threatened to squish you if you didn't fix the sky. She was basically belligerent from the word go. And that's the impression you get from a lot of people. If you have any specific questions, but that's the sense you get from like from like the montage is like there's a bunch of quick cuts. To people being like, yeah, she punched me in the face at my birthday party. Like, yeah, she t- turned me upside down and shook all my lunch money out. She, just, she stole my rubber duck. Like, everyone has a story about a time Lyra was mean to him. Mean to them. Like, like Roland has, like, pages of notes here. Like, rubber duck, got it. Mm-hmm. I've got a question for you, Blood Mountain. Is there anyone that Lyra got on with suspiciously well? Like, that doesn't have an I hate Lyra story, you know, of? Uh, I think she had a really profitable relationship with Penny at the pawn shop because she helped like shake people down and threaten them for the lilies. She was kind of like an honorary lily, mm-hmm. really. She didn't fit. She doesn't fit in Tar. Well, she didn't fit in Tarsus, so she couldn't like mm-hmm. go to their meetings. But she did a lot for them, and that's why a lot of people owe her stuff. <laughs> that that name's coming up a bit today. She owed Lyra money as well. I don't know if that's maybe a lead to follow. Did she do anything special with Wolf? Uh, I mean, Wolf probably owed her stuff. Yeah, that sounds right. I mean, Wolf just kind of <laughs> farms dirt. He doesn't have a lot, so I bet he's probably asked for a lot of favors. Yeah, might need to deal with Wolf a little bit, but I don't think Wolf will. I don't think Wolf is at all who our suspect is. Maybe they might lead us to another suspect, but. That's going to be an annoying conversation. He's probably going to ask if I have any friends now. <laughs> uh, rock, rock, rock team, team rock. You're uh, you're on you're on team us at the moment. Uh, you got any thoughts on this? Because because you you know you, you being part of the team, you, you got anything to contribute? Yeah, I mean, it seems like you guys got three good leads. You could talk to Wolf the Troll. Penny the pawnbroker, or you could just talk to your fortune teller friend who, you know, seems like a cheat code. <laughs> up and up until you mentioned the fortune teller friend, I was gonna be really, like, you know, snarky and point out that you're telling us stuff we already knew and that you were a waste of space here. Mm. Fortune teller's a really smart point. I, I take back the snark. I mean, this, this would be the second time that they mentioned um... Sylvia. Sylvia, right? 
been keeping track of what's been going on here after our interview. Um, Robin is behind Roland and like mocking him as he talks. Like, look at me. I'm smart. I take notes with my man hands. <laughs> take notes with my man hands. Okay. <laughs> so, do we, do we want to pull the Sylvia card now? Is she is she okay after what happened last time, uh, Dora? I just want to acknowledge that you said the Sylvia card, which is very good wordplay. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I see that. Is Sylvia better after, well, what happened last time? Oh, yeah. We had a really good pajama breakfast. Right. There were jammies. There were pancakes. We should totally go back to Sylvia's. I really want pancakes. More so for information, less so pancakes. for pancakes, just because I feel like that's exploiting her her, her hospitality. Information pancakes. Claudia starts going, pancakes, pancakes, pancakes. Pancakes. It's always going to chant with her, but then shoot fire with every intermittent pancake break. <laughs> All right. So you guys want to go to Sylvia's? Is that decided? Yes. And we're going to demand pancakes. We just stomp into our house. Pancakes, pancakes. Every investigation team has their has their psychic buddy they contact to get leads in cases, I guess. Right? Yeah. This is explicitly a, a Legend of Zelda mechanic, the fortune teller. I know it seems like it's just our JoJo reference because of tarot, or I guess Persona. There's several different themes going here, but mechanically, it's the fortune teller from Zelda. Mm. So I guess the, the the cut here is like a sitcom where everyone's going, pancakes, pancakes, and Roland's like, no pancakes, and it just cuts to you guys all eating pancakes. <laughs> it's just like Roland's just rubbing his face. Yeah. The table. Everyone else is stuffing their mouth full of pancakes except for Roland, who has his face in his hands. Thank you for your hospitality as always. No problem. I see that you've embraced that scar in stride very well, by the way. Yeah, I mean it tells a story. It's the ideal scar. Mm-hmm. I won't I won't bore you with my, my heritage stuff, but it's kind of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how you guys liking them cakes? I'm a fan of the pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like this one. She's good. It's weird. They taste a little more burnt than usual, but I don't think that's your fault. That's mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Wheel of Fortune, very apt for what's going on with you. And I do want to put everyone's minds at ease. Your friend Veltari is the devil, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's a common misconception. That's a pretty rocking thing. I'm, I'm, I, I am okay with that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's definitely metal, but it's also, it's not necessarily evil. It's more about, like, selfish desires and, like, earthly pleasure. It's, it can, it can, yeah. it can be complicated and nuanced. And the other one people always worry about is death, because that seems really scary. But that's just, like, mm-hmm. a, a totally natural part of life. It's not, it's nothing to be scared of. The the real bad one is Tower, which uh, I think your friend found out. What was his name? Bumble Snoot. Yeah. Oops. Probably should have got that to you guys a little sooner. Didn't know who you were. Couldn't track you down. It, it, it's it's okay. Okay. So uh, I take it you guys need my help with a case. Cool. Cool. Be much appreciated. Yes. Somebody got frozen and exploded. Yikes. Yeah. How do you want me to do this? Is there a specific question that'll help me narrow it? Hey, do you know anything about a Garrick the Great? Nope. Is he hot? N- hardly. <laughs> <laughs> Meh. He seems to be ice cold in his methods when it comes to murder, at the very least. I don't know. I don't know. I think he sounds pretty cool. I think I think we need to chill on these accusations either way. I want to burn both of their pancakes. <laughs> oh, God, we're in Batman and Robin now, because I've introduced <laughs> ice puns. <laughs> <laughs> I I did not intend to going into Valtari for her to be into puns, but after they worked on flirting adventure, I think that's just gonna be a gonna be a long term character trait now. So that so that so there's team small and team pun is now the division in this party here. Mm. So also you cannot burn my pancakes. I don't have any. <laughs> you have my you have my pancakes. That's the uh, what's happened here, Zoe. I'm gonna burn your pancakes and then begrudgingly eat them. I'm going to drink your milkshake in pancake form. It burned it. Doesn't really work as a reference, but I wanted to say that line. Okay. So, question. Who is this person, this mysterious Garrick the Grand, uh, the man, the person who both 
exist yet doesn't exist. Hmm. That's kind of hard. Obviously, it would be super helpful if I could just flip a card and be like, oh, it's your mother <laughs> in disguise. Hmm. But I don't actually know him, so it's hard for me to channel that. I can kind of look a little bit ahead of your destiny as it is now. Like I said, nothing's fixed, but oh, sure. things things are on track. So I could get, I could tell you if you're on a collision course with a particular thing, but I don't know if I could tell you who. Would it be easier to work from the angle of Lyra's death itself and work from there? As in maybe tracing things about it? I have a feeling that might cause us to retrace our steps a little, little bit, though. She's dead, so her story is ended. There's not really much I can get f- going from there. Right, right. Okay, I've 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 got a question, I guess. I, I I don't know really how this stuff works, but if we were go if we were to go and visit um who who were the people that uh, Lyra owed money to again? Uh uh Penny the pawnbroker and Wolf the troll. Penny and Wolf. Okay. Uh Oh, and they 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 owed money to her. Oh, uh, they owed money to her, right. If we went to see Penny the pawnbroker, mhm. Would we be, can can you tell if we would be likely to run into a very powerful wizard or information about a very powerful wizard? Is that how this works? Um, I, yeah, okay, so if you guys have a particular encounter in mind with someone I know who I can pretty, summon a pretty strong image of, Penny I know, I can tell you uh, generally what I foresee for that. Okay. So yeah, let's start there. Uh, so she shuffles up her cards, does a little reading, does some, uh, seance mood lighting during your guys cool pancake brunch (laughs) um and she says all right so it looks like penny is uh the chariot which represents a kind of someone who's coming out ahead in some kind of competition Uh, the way i interpret this is she seems like a flunky in the lily someone low and kind of entry level and powerless but she's actually kind of in charge of a lot and maybe more powerful than you think she might be at the head of some stuff. So I wouldn't underestimate her. That's the important thing I get, I'm get. i getting from this. I do think it's important that you talk to her, but the the significance of this reading is that the chariot is not to be underestimated. Okay, I'm glad we found that out before going to, uh, going to Penny. Uh, is there anything interesting at all if we go see Wolf? Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Deal, deal, deal. Uh, for Wolf, uh, I've met him a couple times. I get Strength in the reverse position. Mm. So Strength obviously could just be someone powerful physically. It could also be emotional or spiritual. There's some wiggle room here, but also there's something weird here. It's not like he's going to be a source of Strength. He might be adversarial? Not necessarily antagonistic but i don't know if he's going to help Mm. is he might complicate what's going on with you i'm not saying it's not worth checking out Mm. i'm I'm saying he might have his own things going on that i don't know if you want to get dragged into i don't know about the rest of you but it sounds like penny's the way to go here yeah i think so too also i like to hang out with her because she's smaller than me and i feel tall (laughs) also i believe it's tuesday so i it's about time for me to have another check-in on what I've pawned off, so... <laughs> this season needs to be renamed Tuesdays with Zoe. <laughs> Tuesdays with Maury joke. 2017, yeah. here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, in either case, Sylvia. Uh, is there anything that we can do to compensate you for your work here? You guys actually have done more to help me than you can possibly imagine. As soon as everyone saw your mm. your spirit buddies, your ghost buddies, uh, I had people knocking down my door trying to get their own. We've noticed. Yeah. I mean, I'm basically Ilium rich at this point. I have one question before we go. I, I'm, I'm wondering if you can do one more reading for me. And like, this isn't a, this isn't a big reading. This isn't like a mission reading. I'm just, I'm just kind of curious about something. Uh, yeah, sure. If I came back here sometime... And got you to help me get some tattoos done. <laughs> Would that be a fun, cool time for both of us where I'd come out of it looking badass? I don't need to do a reading to tell you that one. I do not know how to tattoo. So I think you probably want Carrie at the bar. She's the tattoo. I'm piercing. She's tattoos. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
Piercings as well, then, I guess. Piercings. Would I look cool with t- piercings? And would we have a fun time doing piercing times? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm biased because piercings are an important rite of passage. Where I'm from, it's it makes you feel alive and acknowledge the transience of your flesh. So, like, if it was up to me, you would be mostly metal <laughs> on the outside. <laughs> so maybe I'm not the person to ask, but I, th- I think yes. Okay, okay. I, uh, I'll hit you up sometime. Okay, just keep in mind, I also would recommend scarring a lot of yourself. I am surprisingly okay with scarring. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll we'll chat sometime <laughs> when we're not trying to ca- catch a killer. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> it seems like Veltari is, like, weirdly winning over people at a crazy rate. Like, she, everyone is just, like, really into her stees. This is kind of the deal with, um, with, um, Donto and why Donto sends Veltari on missions is, like... Inherently, as a tiefling, she shouldn't be this good at, like, winning people over, but that's kind of my deal. I just roll in and make people like me, and then bugger off before they realize that I've done bad things. Yeah, it just wasn't obvious at first, because you were, like, single-mindedly on the mission, and you kind of rubbed, roll in the wrong way, maybe, but, like, now that you've had some time to kind of stretch your legs, it's like, oh, everyone's like, yeah, I like her. (laughs) Yeah, I might be a little bit abrasive, but, you know, everyone's, everyone's pretty cool. I like I like cool cool powers and tattoos and stuff. Let's make some friends. <laughs> I'm still stuffing pancakes in my mouth. Perfect. Like if we're leaving, I actually want Zoe to hang around behind for a moment to uh, speak with Sylvia alone. <laughs> yeah, you pull that real subtle dragon move. Where <laughs> yeah, well, I, I do the, the the classic dragon exit, which is where you you know come into a party and then leave in about 15 minutes without telling anybody. But that's all just a reverse psychology trick to then show up. 15 minutes after everyone else leaves then again (laughs) okay all right so you pull a classic dragon exit uh as you see sylvia is kind of cleaning up pancake plates uh hey sylvia do you mind uh doing one more reading uh sure Uh, my hands are a little sticky but if you whatever you need i i mean like i don't want to ruin your cards no it's it's all good uh i have a pretty important encounter coming up and i was wondering if i might be able to get some insight on how it might go with your fortune telling okay yeah if i can help okay um so have you seen the uh other version of me that's around town she calls herself claire now claire yeah i know she came over here i i got her a pretty cool uh ghost friend it kind of looks like a manta ray but with like a demon face it's really scary it's cool oh Dope. Um, I'm going to have an encounter with her soon, I think. Do you think you could read how that might go? Uh, yeah. Let me just, uh, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Uh, the card she pulls out for Claire is The Fool. She says, that's somebody who's only just begun their journey. It's it's the very beginning of the story of Tarot. So the her, she has infinite possibility. She could become anything, do anything. There's, like, no limit. So if you have an important encounter, it will probably help shape who she's going to become. Uh, Seems like a pretty big responsibility. Are you worried about, like, being a mentor? No. (laughs) Kind of the opposite, really. Oh, so like a evil mentor. Like a vizier. (laughs) What happens if you pull more cards out? Does that reveal what will happen? Hmm, it's hard to say because nothing's fixed. So when you get there, you could give her the life advice that will make her become president someday, or you could cut her head off. There's no way for the cards to know what choice you'll make. And up until the time you do something, everything's on the table. Hmm. Yeah. Free will. It's crazy, right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Made myself sad. All right. Thanks, Sylvia. I'm sorry. No, it's good. It's on me. Okay. Your pancakes are dope. Goodbye. Thanks. If you see her wearing a cool coat, it's her ghost. Don't get fooled. Oh, that's a good piece of information to keep down. <laughs> she like yells that at you as you leave the, <laughs> the room. Uh, if anybody wants to Google D&D cloaker, you can see what specifically she, re- she is referring to. Mm. Uh, you would not know that if Chris hadn't asked. So that might actually be in- tactical information for the future, depending on how it shakes out. Uh, you guys are going to Tarsus? Oh, yes. Yeah. Bioware's Tarsus <laughs> TM. Mm-hmm. Um, so first things first, uh, I'm the realist. You guys walk into Tarsus and 
<laughs> Sorry, I could. I ha- it's literally just a Pavlovian at this point. Uh, as you walk into the bar, you see walking out of, and I guess only Zoe knows this, out of the room in which Lady Nim's space office is, <laughs> her pocket dimension <laughs> that she hides in a room, uh, coming out of that office is Alice Hawthorne, and she has her dragon bone staff. And she walks out of that room and closes the door and goes to walk by you guys and out of the bar. It you! Ah! What are you doing here? It's a free (laughs) hell prison. Well, no, I mean, you're allowed to be here. I was just surprised. Oh. Sorry? Hi! Oh, gosh, again! (laughs) I have a cool pet now. Do you want to see? Uh, sure. I show her Perry Mason. Nice. Ghosts. I'm very into it. I think you probably probably know my predilections. You should get one. If you go see Sylvia, she can get you one. <laughs> Out of character, did I ever had a chance to go talk to her about what the warden talked to me during the, well, after the scene I had during the level up episode last week? Uh, if you want to say that you delivered a message to her, you can. It's up to you. Yeah, let's just say I've done that. But uh, uh, upon seeing Alice Roland just sort of nods her and say, I, uh, I'm sorry again about the news I had to deliver. She says, thank you for all of your help, Roland. This is uh, twice now. And uh, also a little Zoe, who I just realized is a dragon. I was a little zoned out, and now that it's hitting me, it's surprising me a lot more. It's coming in waves. <laughs> mm-hmm. Thanks for all your help, everybody. Are you okay, Zoe? Ah, uh, I mean, I think so. How about you? You should pet her. <laughs> Dora, that's your solution to everything. Roland then kind of leans in a little bit to Alice says, and says to her, I'm trying to do whatever I can to persuade or convince the warden into releasing your husband. Thank you, Roland. I appreciate that. Obviously, I'm not sitting idly by. I'm, uh, I've got some plans in motion myself, but your thoughtfulness is appreciated. Alice Alice currently has the Dragonbone staff with her. Correct. Just from a glance, can I ascertain anything about this item? Right now it just kind of looks like a polished bone staff. It doesn't I've seen a lot of fan art where it has like the big uh Flintstones like humorous cleft in it, but it's just like a smooth staff. Okay, 14 on Arca- Arcana. So it looks like a staff made of bone and, you know, wizards use all kinds of staff. And just by looking at it, you don't think like, oh, that is made out of the bone of a dragon, which was blessed by a god to kill an evil dragon. That's an artifact of incredible power, which it is, but you don't know that from seeing it. But you do think like, you know, it looks very nice. You assume it's expensive and powerful. It seems like something that would be worth getting for the monetary value alone, let alone the magic. But you don't, you can't right, just by looking at it know its history. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll just give Noah, uh, Alice a, like, kind of knowing glance as she goes by, kind of silently recognizing that we still sort of have a, a deal going. Yeah, she makes eye contact with you and, like, puts a hand on your scaly shoulder area. And just, like, you guys share a moment where it's like, yes, the plants are in motion. <laughs> <laughs> Where it's like, hey, I'm here to, I just came out of the room of the Lily, the Lily's leader. Like, obviously I'm plotting some stuff and she doesn't know you also did that. Okay. Uh, And then Alice kind of nods and uh, takes her leave of that place. And you guys are left in the bar. What would I roll to stealthily try to hold Claudia's hand? Huh. A sleight of hand would be the check to do it stealthily. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Hey. <laughs> Lauren's been planning all week. She Lauren's playing a different game. Let's all just be clear. I rolled a twenty. Christ on a cracker. <laughs> she's gonna get, she's gonna cause a divorce to happen here. That's all. I'm just I'm calling it here. I'm I'm just so happy that we're keeping up this whole thing of um critical flirting roles. Yeah, like, let's get these relationships going right with these roles, everyone. Yeah, I mean, you got a 20, uh, and there's been plenty of groundwork. You've spent all, you're the only one who's spent all your downtime scenes with the same person. So, like, you've been putting in oh, nice. the work, and, like, yeah, you take Claudia's hand, and you guys are walking hand in hand. <laughs> sure. Yes. Whew. You know what just occurred to me? Because of uh, the current eroticism in this room, 
<laughs> is that uh, the lilies, right? So they're named after the flower because in the first episode, I was like, uh, what's a cool flower? And Lauren said lilies. Um, and that's that's totally cool. I didn't know what I was going to name them because I wanted a flower name, but the flower I had in mind, which is like this really cool purple one that grows in areas like what I had in mind is uh, Kaluna, also called Heather. And I was like, oh, I can't call them the Heathers because that's a fu- Oh, my God. <laughs> like, that would have been way too on the nose. So I was like, shit, I had to find a name for them that's flowery, but I didn't know which one. And then Lauren picked it. Uh, only later did I kind of remember that Lily, besides being just an incredibly yonic flower, is also euphemistic. Like, I think enough of us are fans of Japanese media to know the term Yuri. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. which is lesbian content uh the japanese word yuri just means lily okay that's literally what that word means <laughs> so calling it's all coming together calling them the lilies is basically calling them the vagina flowers <laughs> uh, the, the, i i did at one point google the lilies and the first thing i came across is that they were an indie rock band that had a single song to commemorate the 3-1 victory of Ar- Arsenal FC in the FA Cup <laughs> final in 1991. That's the most British thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, they they like three <laughs> different bands made a super band to record like an indie rock song about a particular football score over here in England. And that was the Lilies. <laughs> So I, I definitely love the name, but it's way more evocative than I thought, and I'm blaming Lauren, because I was going to name them something else. I was going to name them after a <laughs> fucking... I'll take that blame. ...cool-ass movie. Um, so you guys are in Tarsus. You guys are going to go talk to Penny. Uh, let's assume you guys get there without incident, and no one falls down the stairs. Oh, on on the way there, uh, is if Carrie's at the bar, I just want to I just want to give like a, a little wink. I, I want to give a wink <laughs> and like a hey, how how you doing? Kind of look as I go past. As you you wink at Carrie, a ghostly owl b- appears on the liquor like rack behind her. Uh, grabs a drink and flies it over to you. Uh, I I say thanks and I just like very quickly like sort of blow a kiss while winking as if it's like a, ah just playing this <laughs> off as a silly thing. The owl goes back over to Carrie and lands on her shoulder. And off I go with the drink, and that's the whole interaction. <laughs> Smooth as silk. Yeah, you gotta leave them wanting more. <laughs> when you get up to Penny's uh, shop, uh, she sees Roland come in first and just immediately goes over to the armor <laughs> and uncovers it. And it's like, yeah, yeah, here it is, unscratched, buffed, waxed, polished. I trust you, I trust you. Well, that's your first mistake. <sighs> I trust you within li- a certain limit. Let's just, let's phrase it that way then. Smarter. Well, how can I help? Oh, wow, there's a lot of you. Oh, okay. Are we all going to fit in this room? Uh, <laughs> there's like eight people in here now. I mean, I guess a giant dog fit in here and only all he did was bump and scratch the table and slobber all over the table. Mm-hmm. He messed my table up is where I'm going with this, but it looks like uh, we're all in. Okay, what's up? Hey, short stuff. Hey, also short stuff. That wasn't a great comeback. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> That was your mistake. Got me. Is that is that what you guys are here for? Are we just uh, exchanging, <laughs> just exchanging witty banter? Uh, I guess I'll just jump into this. Why not? Um, there's a dead giant in town. You uh, apparently owed this giant money. Do you know anything about that? Uh, I owe a lot of people stuff. They owe me stuff. You know, sometimes you got to operate in the red. It's you know, you got to spend money to make money. Let's be a bit more specific. Uh, Lyra's dead. Fuck. Fuck, huh? Mm. Shit. <sighs> Tits. Bitch. Ass. Cock. Just let it all out. Let it all out. Bastard. I'm glad Witty isn't here for all this language. Does this <laughs> does this mean that you're gonna need someone else to be your muscle, or is there another reason why you're uh upset about this, Penny? I mean she's real good muscle. <laughs> you don't say no when someone can turn you to jelly with their bare hands. That's true. That's true. I am curious quite how much you owed Lyra. Eh, I mean, she did some stuff for me, and I didn't have anything she wanted, so I just went on credit. It, <laughs> wait, hold on. Am I a suspect? Do you think I killed Lyra over? You're not necessarily a suspect. Like, I, I'm gonna, I, like, I'm gonna deal with one thing first. Um, we kind of brought her head back to life, and her final request was that we collect on her debts, and she specifically mentioned you, so, uh, guess you owe us now. 
I mean, that's very Lyra <laughs> until the end. Yeah, so uh, unless you want to disregard the last wishes of a of a head that came back to life for like five minutes, I guess you owe us now. <laughs> and he, she just looks at Roland. She's like, I could put it towards the armor. That would help, but uh, for now, we're more interested in figuring out who uh, who committed the murder. Fine, okay, let's be a spoil sport, Roland. Okay, we're here to find out who killed uh, killed Lyra. Well, I mean, if you narrow it down to just everyone she pissed off, I guess that leaves everyone. So, I mean, is that helpful? Okay. Mm. <sighs> I mean, didn't she? Didn't she hate you guys? I heard you guys started some shit. Are you? Are you not suspects? Here's here's the thing. We know we didn't kill her because we are us, and we didn't do <laughs> it. Um, as far as you know. Also, we 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 brought her head back to life. She was pretty pretty solidly able to tell us who did this. Uh, yeah, I remember hearing that from you. I honestly didn't retain it because I don't care about this that much. Oh, hold on. I want to roll an insight. I think she's lying. Twenty four. Holy Christmas. Holy Chris mess. That's me. <laughs> I just <laughs> I had to do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So uh she says she doesn't care about this, and Zoe, you immediately think that's not true. <laughs> like Lyra was very valuable to this organization. She was basically a lily. She was a kind of a secret lily, in fact, just judging by the way this conversation was going. And she was kind of uh, the lily's spy inside the giants because the, the giants mostly just want to be left alone. But they're very powerful. They can kill anything they want. <laughs> like they're they're an incredibly useful asset. And one of them was basically the lily's inside man, and now she's dead. Uh, can I then shout out objection with the appropriate theme music playing behind me? You can, yeah. If you want, if you want to interject, you absolutely can. You don't need permission. Yeah, I, I think she will say that. Uh, what not as much grandiose as what's playing in my mind, where uh, not only did she do the objection post, but then Fat Boy Slim did it too. Uh, but in this case, she just says, "I don't think that's true. It sounded like you really cared about her before. Plus, she was a member of your group." Look, do you want me to send flowers? Yes. I'll go to the funeral. What do you want from me? As as this is going on, can I cast detect thoughts? You can. Uh, the way this works is that you get their surface thoughts, and if you want to get deeper, you have to make a check, and if you fail, they know you're doing it. Okay, so what what, do, what am I getting from surface thoughts? So surface thoughts, you get Penny is currently just racking her brain trying to think of all the things Lyra was working on and what the losses are and how she can make that up. She's like basically going through like a mental ledger. So she's like, okay, well, I'm going to have to get somebody on Blood Mountain because we're going to have to shake him down for the next house. Carrie uh, is falling behind on her drink quota. I I need somebody to intimidate her. Uh, we got to get Wolf's necklace. Uh, there's just like a bunch of things she's running through her head, thinking like that that Lyra was trying to accomplish for the group. Penny, you wouldn't know anything about a wizard that might have killed Lyra, would you? Very pretentious. Uh, no, I can't say I met any pretentious wizards recently. Didn't you guys come here asking about that before? Yes, yes, we did. Yeah, I feel like we were talk- people were talking about that for like a day, and then it kind of went nowhere. Uh, no, no, no I, got, I ain't got nothing for you there. I see, no, nothing slagging up on surf- surface level thoughts. No, that seems to be the truth. What if I roll inside again? I mean, she's in, Veltari is in her mind, so I don't know if you can do better than that. Lyra didn't do anything that made her into a liability or something, right? How long does Detect Thoughts for? If I can just give you the honest... Uh, yeah, one second while I double check that. Uh, one minute. So that's still fair. Yeah, you ask, does she do anything that made her a liability? Yeah. And you still just see going over in Penny's head the, all the things that Lyra was up to that are like useful and valuable. It seems like, no, like this is a, a monetary loss. This is like not good for them. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't get any sense that they had to get rid... They were trying to get rid of her. Fair enough. So we can rule out some sort of hit job for debts owed or otherwise, this is still the motive just seems to not be coming up from anywhere. I mean, except for all the people that she's pissed off and threatened. Yes. Snapped their limbs and stole their possessions and crushed their houses. 
is there anyone that owed more than they were realistically ever going to pay that Lyra might have been shaking down? Um, I mean, that's kind of our MO, MO, right? Like, when people come here and they're like, what do I do? And they're like, why don't you owe us a lot? And then we'll set you up. Like, yeah, like, there's a lot. And then there's, like, you stand out as, like, owing far more than anyone else kind of money. Yeah, um, I think the, probably the person who's in deepest is Wolf. His thing is that he doesn't make anything of value, right? He grows mm. taters or something. Like, he's not... He was never going to pay back, not because he owed more, but because he doesn't generate any revenue. Mm. He's kind of a kind of a bum. Right. I want to ask one last question before I run out of detect thoughts. Um, mm-hmm. Look, we, we were kind of given reason to think that coming here uh, might be beneficial to our investigation. There's not anything that you're uh, deliberately not telling us about Lyra, right? Um, so you have detect thoughts on, and you can see in her in her mind, like just surface thinking about stuff, and it's all pretty petty stuff, just like stuff that Lyra has like taken from people and people she like assaulted and stuff, like nothing that strikes you as relevant to the case. Like you could, <laughs> like you could conceivably try to bust Lyra for some of these infractions, but she's unjailable currently in her scattered across the field form. So none of it's like particularly damning. That's about all, all I get then. I I feel like I possibly wasted that opportunity, but that's... But yeah, so you get the sense here that like you think, oh, Lady Nim is the leader of the Lilies. But you, between peering into her mind and just like kind of asking her about the way that Lyra operated, you get the sense that Penny is actually in charge of most of the criminal operations here, which is kind of a fulfillment of what you got from Sylvia. Mm. Which is like, oh, the tiny imp who couldn't take a toddler in a fist fight is actually like kind of running the show even if she is a flea to nim's you know Mm. (laughs) tarask in actual abilities i'd like to think that i'm still holding claudia's hand and making like googly eyes at her okay so i mean that's happening there here's the thing is that you guys haven't really sat down and talked about what you are to each other or how robin fits into that i'd be holding his hand too but it would burn me yeah very badly um, so I don't know, like that situation is still developing and I think that's probably a conversation that needs to happen at this point, but for now you're just kind of low key in it. You're keeping it on the DL as they say. The only the last thing Roland was going to say is any, um, any particular sales you've made recently other than, uh, Ishmael getting that salamander sheath, uh, well, without stealing it by accident. Uh, I mean, I moved all that furniture through here for you guys. That was the thing before the sheath. Winifred ordered a bunch of jars. Oh, no, not more. Light ordered a bunch of uh, metal and, like, glass. That's the last thing I can remember. All right, all right. Metal and glass. Oh, right, right. Okay. I think we have to pay some other folks a few visits, but if we come up with anything, we'll be sure to let you know, and uh, hopefully you can find a way to keep your operation running smoothly, right? I mean, I have to. <laughs> Failure isn't really a, a... It's not really an option here, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't really indulge in it. Not with what we have here. Okay. Thank you for your time and thank you for your, your answers. Come back when you have something to trade. <laughs> we might be working on that right now. As you guys are like descending the stairs inside of Tarsus, you're just like walking and talking about the case, and you've made pretty good progress, actually. You have a couple of great leads. You've made some really important interviews. This is actually going very well. Um, And you're just like talking amongst yourself, putting information together, just being congratulatory uh, when you hear kind of a kerfuffle outside and it doesn't seem like extreme, but it get, it's increasing in volume as you guys start to leave. And you see that people in town are kind of beginning to congregate near the sacrum. And it's not immediately obvious why. There's just a people like, hey, did you see that? Like, hey, what's going on over there? And there's just like a small crowd gathering of just people who happen to be near. But as you look at the scene, it becomes clear what's what's drawing everyone's attention. And that is the sky, which is dark and cloudy and overcast and also filled with the spirits of the dead <laughs> that Theodora released uh, oh so many hours ago. Those spirits are kind of beginning to spiral down together in a kind of almost 
tornado or whirlpool fashion it's very slow and gradual so at first you didn't even notice because you're like oh the clouds are moving they're clouds but it's like no the the spirits seem to be getting dragged down en masse and as you guys kind of look at this and probably get a little closer it becomes clear that the conversation roland had with warden light about trapping the spirits is happening (laughs) Like there was a time skip after that conversation. He's like, should I destroy the spirits or should I re-imprison them? And Roland said, imprison them. Because if the barrier goes down, they'll be able to go to the afterlife after. And Warden Light took that to heart. And so as you guys see, Warden Light is standing outside the sacrum. On his arm, there is what appears to be a mirror, which is strapped to his arm like a buckler which is just a fancy word for like arm shield, <laughs> but it's been basically um, he's kind of donned it on his, on his person, like equipment and he's holding it up and the spirits are being sucked down into the mirror in a huge whirlpool tornado of souls. This isn't affecting our spirit animals, is it? No, uh, it does not appear to be. We're not losing our personas. <laughs> nope. Um, but as you guys know, a bunch of people in town got their own before this happened. Uh, you don't know how many people, but it appears that that window is closing. Um, do you guys want to do anything? Because people are gathering around to watch this, and Warden Light is just standing outside the tower in his fancy purple robe, arm raised, with his like, mirror shield, sucking up all of the spirits. Sorry, folks, you missed your chance to be one of the cool kids. <laughs> As you say that, you see in the crowd, Claire Elise Legrand... And she seems to be wearing a strange leathery kind of cloak. Ah, crap. And she is also just watching this as uh, this enormous twister of souls gets uh, sucked up. And uh, if you guys just watch and let this happen, the ghost problem of Ilium will be solved. I hope they like it in the mirror. Roland will will try to just walk past the crowd up to the warden as... Basically, this ritual's ending. Uh, look to him and say, "Will it be possible to release them if the barrier ever comes down?" Your, your grace, brother Hawklight. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't expect to see you here. I that was a bit more of a spectacle than I was uh, intending. Uh, mm-hmm. As uh, you and I have discussed, my imprisonment is conditional on the reform of the prisoner. So. Every soul carries with it a burden and sins, and if they are cleansed and the person repents sincerely, they will be released. I thought what I said was to allow their judgment to happen with the other with the with the various gods after they're released when the barrier goes down. <sighs> Brother Hawklight, here we are again. Philosophical questions, justice, what does it mean? Prison reform. Very deep topics we could while away the hours discussing. I, I fear, however, that you will find all of my answers unsatisfying. I'm very quickly starting to worry that all of the spirits being sucked into this mirror means that my ability to recreate our early reactions with Lyra of bringing the dead back to ask them questions can't be repeated in the future? Uh, not necessarily, because... So Lyra's spirit probably just got sucked up, but if someone dies after this point, they will be free in here. Hmm. Okay, okay, I won't act uh, rashly then. I was about to do something that would have been a little bit too rash and uh, careless. Roland just says, philosophical or not, there is at least some practical reasons to try to get this barrier down, and I still aim to find a way to make that happen. Is that for your own satisfaction? Do you want to be the person who does the impossible? I think you should look deep inside yourself and ask if you really serve the best interests of the triad, or if you have become blinded by your own ambition. Damn. The last time people questioned me on (laughs) whether I served the triad or not, I ended up saving innocent lives while others were being slaughtered around me in the name of the triad. I do not feel that it's appropriate to stand idly by while spirits or individuals are trapped indefinitely with no hope of even seeing 
what the afterlife has for them. I envy your certainty in matters such as these. I'm afraid that I can no longer afford to be so close-minded when it comes to these topics. The only thing I know for sure is the man who made this mirror was a good man, and his intentions were pure, and the magic involved is unimpeachable, and that guides me forward, and I hope you can respect that. I respect ac- actions, Your Grace. I can't respect words on their own. And then Roland just starts to move to walk away. Yeah, so y- you walk away. Um, does anybody else say anything to Warden Light before he walks away? I just kind of stare, I maybe gla- glare at him slightly, but that's about it. As he kind of slams the door of the sacrum as he goes in, you guys do hear like the faint clink of chains as he exits the scene. Oh, jeez. So, Zoe uh, <laughs> uh, is going to have to, I think at this point, go up to Claire, or I guess fly over to her. Yeah, Claire's like, oh, snap, a dragon, snap dragon. It's me. Hi, me. I'm Claire. Zoe. No, Claire. (sighs) I'm Zoe. No, you're a dragon. I. (laughs) Oh, wild magic. I'm. I'm sorry. (laughs) I don't know if a dragon could do that thing where, like, the hand like hits the top of the face, then slowly drags down it. But that's what Zoe would be doing at this point, if it's possible. This is worse than the water buffalo incident. I mean. It depends on what the property damage from this amounts to. Uh, <laughs> True that. I have a high goal to get a hit this time. <laughs> They're, they never got those stains out. Ah, uh, well, that's their fault. They shouldn't have had so much punch bowls there. Yeah, there was a lot. Uh, we need to talk. Okay. Somewhere private. And I think now. Oh, uh, Okay. So Roland's walking away, and I guess everyone else is giving you space to talk to Claire. And so Claire walks with you kind of around the sacrum. You guys are behind it now. You're separated from the group, and you're standing behind this great white tower on the opposite side of the door. And uh, Claire kind of shifts her coat, <laughs> her cloak, and says, uh, So uh, what do you want to talk about? So you know why I'm here, right? In Ilium? Yeah, we came to take down the barrier to show everybody that we're just as good as Stella. Yeah, and uh, you kind of know how important that is to me, right? Of course. So, the best way I have to accomplish that goal right now... Uh Uh-huh. ...is to kill you. Uh Uh-huh. So... That's why I thought we needed to talk. Claire casts Fireball. As always, I'd like to thank Overclock Remix for our theme music, including Acoustic Jam at the Lucifer Alpha, an arrangement of Biohazard from Snatcher, Simply Begrooved, an arrangement of Simple and Clean from Kingdom Hearts, and Mystic Chemicals, an arrangement of Mystic Cave and Chemical Plant Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog. Executive producers for June 2017 are Jade, Kerstine Haslinger, Extellaris, Joseph Timbrello, the Cult of Gorfanax, Irving Royale, Andrew Grothen, Paul Mullen, Finch DeYoung, Luke Powers, Michael Goodell, Brent, Sarah Likens, Pruitt Holcomb, Artemis BJJ, Martial Arts in Bristol, Francois V, Tarka, Melissa Nielsen, Shyness, Dennis Pancake Detlefson, Ripter Stormwolf, Miko from Finland, Dennis Bengston, Josh Mosier, 
Indigo Van Dane, James Bevan, Ellison Ansel, Sidney Marzing, Just a Jester, John Potts, Kevin Dobbins, Savarden Akrasimova, Carl, Brady Warner, Kitty Foe, James Neely, Eugene T, Marissa Donaldson, Melanie Joe, Lana Seawolf, Toby Gleason Stack, Ruby Offer, Matthew Weber, Sarah Henley, Melissa Booker, Cameron Abbas, Dylan, Gary Sayon, Anna Stuhlfarer, Sean the Host of Funk Dunk, Giorgio Renna, Harrison Andrew, Kevin Sidlow, Christopher Charlotte, Jorit, Vigor Arnston, Cody Jackson, August Rue, Athos, and Ingmar Gremmen. You can join this list by supporting the show at patreon.com slash austinyorski, and you can support Chris and his artistic endeavors at patreon.com slash weekly manga recap, and you can find Laura at patreon.com slash Laura K Buzz. You can also help support the show by liking, commenting, and subscribing to us on Google Play, iTunes, YouTube, or Podbean, or anywhere else you found us. Are you pirating us right now? Are we on the deep web? If you're a cop, you have to tell me.